Okay, hello YouTube. Um, I'm back. Um, the last video was on the first five seals. And I'll be picking up on the sixth seal, which is starting at Revelation chapter 6, 12. And the sixth seal is when Satan, it's one of the signs that Satan is uh, coming on board. So here we go. Uh, verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Anytime that you see the winds, it is relating to the four winds that commence tribulation. Okay. Now, I want to take you over to Joel, second chapter, verse 30. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. I want you to know that it's going to look a lot like when Christ is supposed to be here okay um the signs in the heavens and earth are going to look similar but you have to know the difference and i'll be going over what to look for um with what's coming with satan and then i'll go over later on Christ's return on the seventh seal, which is Yeshua's number. Okay, so Amos, let's go over to Amos, and this is what happens when that celestial body crosses over. I don't know if it's a planet or a star. I have, I don't know. I saw it, and I'm not, you know, I don't know really anything about planets and stars and stuff, so all I can tell you is what I saw, but it will be crossing. So here's Amos chapter 8, verse 9. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. Okay, that's... I saw the... Uh, sun dip down at noon with the planet X crossing. Chapter 10, or verse 10. And I will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the morning of an only sun and the end thereof as a bitter day. And it is going to be a bad day. Uh, verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. So, before um, Satan gets here, <clears throat> we're We'll have some inflation and we'll have some famine, true famine. But on when Satan comes here as the Antichrist instead of Christ, then um, he's going to be bringing in peace and prosperity and fixing all the things that 
planet X had destroyed. He's fixing everything. So that's why people are going to believe him. But just remember this. Satan brings destruction. And Yeshua doesn't need the planet. Okay. He's coming down here full force. And he doesn't need anything like that. Okay, now, now Hezekiah in 2 Kings 20, 8 through 11, Hezekiah was really sick. And, you know, God told him, hey, no, heal me, heal me, and, you know, please help me. And um, the thing is, is, God was being good to Israel. And because uh, the king of Babylonia was coming, and, you know, it, there were warnings after warning, and God promised him that he'd have 15 more years. But after he dies, then, then Israel goes into captivity. But with this sign, Hezekiah didn't believe him, I guess. And what he wanted was a sign. So I am going to read it and to show you that God has rocked the earth before. And he's going to do it again. So 2 Kings 20, uh, verses 8 through 11. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, who was the prophet, what shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go into the house of the Lord the third day? And Isaiah said, This sign shalt thy ha thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he hath spoken. Shall the shadow go forward ten degrees or back ten degrees? And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down ten degrees, nay, but let the shadow return backwards ten degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backward, by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. So it was on the steps. And then let's go to Isaiah 38. 7 and 8. And this shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he hath spoken. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which has gone down in the sundial of Ahaz, 10 degrees backwards. So the sun returned 10 degrees by which degrees it was gone down. And at this point, I want to tell you about what I had seen. I, when Yeshua had walked out into the garden, um, he brought up the globe of the earth. And he held it in his hands. And he tipped it to the right and to the left, to the right and to the left. And then tipped it almost completely upside down. So that is when the fake Messiah comes. So that is one of the differences. On Christ's return, um, the earth is going to be completely tipped upside down. And then it's going to go back up. It's going to stay in position like a pause and then reset back where it was. And that's kind of a reset for the millennium. And at that time, we'll be in a different dimension and we'll all be in spiritual bodies. That's another sign to look for. If you are in your spiritual body and <clears throat> somebody's saying that they're the return of Christ, don't believe him because we're all instantly changed on Christ's return. And plus, there's just a lot of differences that we'll go over.
<clears throat> okay, now let's go over to Isaiah 24, 18, 20. And it talks a little bit more about this planet X crossing. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake. There's more. But I want to go over to Genesis 7.11. In the six, because it's going to be like the, the time of Noah too. So, so Genesis seven eleven. In the six hundredth year of spring, Noah's life. In the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the foundations of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. So the firmament was torn open, and that's why we have all these weather, weather problems and different kinds of weather now. Genesis seven nineteen, And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Now God promised not to flood the earth again like this again, but of course... When the earth rocks back and forth, there's going to be some of that. So you will really want to get be off of, you know, uh, any coastal areas, at least at least 100 miles in. And uh, the reason why I'm talking about this particular verse is because the water that will be coming upon the earth is going to be the deception that just floods the earth and <clears throat> so at that time satan and the fallen angels um will be cast out of heaven and thrown to earth and of course you know uh, Revelation talks all about it, and there's just so much more to talk about. <clears throat> okay, and the war is between God and Satan. So, and when Satan gets here, he is trying to get you to believe the lie that he is the return of Yeshua. And he's going to not kill you physically. He's going to try and kill you spiritually and get and, and worship him. But there's a backup plan. So now Genesis 7:24 has is very interesting, and I want to make sure that we cover this. And the waters, which is Satan's deception, prevailed upon the earth a hundred and fifty days. This is a five-month period of time. If you go over to Revelation chapter 9, 5, it also states five months. And remember, the time has been shortened for the elect's sake. In Revelation chapter 12, um, kind of this is another, another signs and things like that to look for. Revelation 12, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Of course, this is like a zodiac, something appearing. And the 12 stars are the 12 tribes of Israel. And the woman clothed is Israel. Kind of what the meaning is there. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. 
time of sorrow and tribulation coming. The delivery is when Christ returns, the real Christ. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Okay, now I'll explain to you what this is. Revelation 13, 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, which sea usually means people, and saw a beast. If you go to Revelation 6, 8, then this is the fourth seal. Rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his head ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. This is the New World Order the New World Order B system rising up to unite the world as one under the old old Babylonian system, which they joined together these four things, economics, political, educational, and the last that will happen is is uniting all of the religions into one and Satan demanding worship. And he's going to say he is the return of Christ. But don't believe it. Study, study, because you get you got to know this. He brings in a false peace with prosperity, fixing the world's problems, this is the, um, when he first comes, he'll fix all the world's problems. This is the uh, wound, the fatal wound to the beast head. And so he will come in, fix it all, and uh, say a lot of great things and everything. But... And he's going to be a supernatural being. He's going to be Satan posing as Christ. So um, you need to really study so you know the difference. You don't want to be caught worshiping him. But there's more to this, so let's go. So uh, Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. So, the sixth seal, the sixth vial, and the sixth trump. That's his number. On Yeshua's return, it's seven, seven, seven. Which seven in the Bible means spiritual completeness. 666 six, six, six is the six-day creation of man, mankind, the ethnos. So, let's see. Now, and the war will be on the saints, really, because he's not, Satan won't be worried about those who are worshiping him. He's already got them. But there are going to be people out there that are not going to worship him. And, um, you know, you have to really just know the difference. If you don't, well, yeah, it's not a good thing. Let's go back to Isaiah 24, 19 through 23. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The, the earth moved exceedingly. Okay, so this is talking about both Satan's appearance and Yeshua's appearance. And what will happen to the earth? 
Okay, on uh, verse 20, this is Satan's appearance. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. This is the revolt of Satan and the fallen angels, like the earth itself is revolting against it. And this is where the crossing occurs, and earth is tilted four times and then falls down, almost tips upside down. And it will not rise again. Satan's, this is the very last time that Satan will be allowed to set up a kingdom. So, and his time is short, and he will be desperate for your love, so. And he really thinks he can win. He, he thinks he can win, and, you know, the test, it's really a testing ground if you have um, studied to show yourself approved, if you know what um, God ha is saying, you won't be fooled. And uh, if you don't, if you're studying, you don't get it, just pray. Pray to God. Ask him for the Holy Spirit knowledge to open up and reveal these things to you. Because that is the ceiling. Okay. Um, let's see. I was going to go over the millennium really quick. Because on Yeshua's return... Satan is cast into a little cell, and he is sealed over where not even his spirit can, can influence anybody. And the millennium period is a time of teaching and discipline. So, say you ended up worshiping Satan... And you truly were deceived. You had no idea. Maybe your pastor said, hey, that is the Christ return. And they had you believing that. But then the 7,000 very elect, which are the first fruits, are delivered up to councils and the synagogues of Satan. That is broadcasted worldwide. And the Holy Spirit is speaking through them so that anybody who is listening, they hear it in their own dialect, their own tongue, everything. So you can't miss the mark. And it's warning. It's saying, you know, you're worshiping the false Messiah and, of course, Scripture and everything. So if you were not, if you truly didn't know... And you hear one of the 7,000 speaking, and you turn around and you repent. Yeah, you still worship the, the false Messiah, but during the millennium, you will have a chance to learn the truth. And then at the end of the millennium, the thousand years, then you'll be tested. Everybody, except those uh, who are immortal at that time, meaning their spirit is liable to die and need testing, then Satan will be loosed one more time to test God's people. And it'll be completely amazing because there actually be people who will believe Satan again and... and Go to war. Well, God just wipes them out with one, you're gone. And then the very first person to go into the lake of fire and to be blotted out forever is Satan. And then, you know, anyone who followed him, knowing the truth and, you know, so people will have an opportunity if you haven't. If you did worship 
the false messiah and you truly didn't know. So, um, let's see. Uh, now, I say uh, 2421. This is on Yeshua's return, something to look forward to. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are high and the kings of the earth upon, upon the earth. So all those that willingly worshipped Satan. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in prison. And after many days, they shall be visited. Let's see, uh, verse 23. And the moon shall be confound. Okay, this is the difference between the planet crossing, which is Satan, and when Yeshua returns. So listen very closely. Then the moon shall be confounded, and the sun ashamed, meaning turn pale. When the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients glorious. So there will no longer be the moon and the sun. And uh, the Shekinah glory will be there during the millennium. Okay. Which is kind of amazing if... Anybody listens to Dr. Claudia Albers, and she's talking about the sun and how it's losing its power, you know, and that could definitely be a sign, and why they would need a sun simulator. So, anyway, all that is just craziness, and the deception, and all that, that we're already in. Okay. And as I've said before, um, when I saw the beginning of the planet crossing, it came from the southwest sky. And it started with an earthquake, and it's one long, continuous earthquake, and is the closer it gets, the more terrible the earthquake. Uh, let's see. Now, before this crossing, the Pope is going to announce that this planet will be crossing. But he's, whether this is intentional or not, it's going to be around the first part of the month. Uh, and it's going to be in a springtime month. So he's going to announce it and say we've got about six to eight weeks, which would take us into the next month. But the reality is we only have about two weeks, 14 days, from the time that it's announced to the crossing. And it's on the last weekend of that month that he's announcing it. Okay, let's see. Now back to the rest of Revelation 6, 13, 17. So, verse 6, And the stars of heaven fell into the earth. Uh, let's see. And I saw a star fall from heaven into the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Uh, let's go over to 14 and see who, the, who this star is. Isaiah 14, 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Luf one of Lucifer's name. 
Satan's name. I mean, it all is kind of a description of who he is. Um, let's see. Cut down to the ground, which didst subdue, weaken the nations. For thou saidest in thine heart, I will mount up into the heavens. I will exact my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. This isn't um, in Zion, but the divine assembly of judgment. So he just, yeah. So he's wants he wants your worship, and he really thinks he can win. He even as a fig tree. Uh, a, we're in the last generation, and a generation it started in 1947 with Israel be, becoming a state. And in the Bible, 40, 70, or 120 years is considered a generation. So, um... Even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. So the four winds that hold back tribulation until the 144,000 are sealed in their foreheads. Then the release of the four <coughs> winds means tribulation has begun. Uh, 14. And the heavens parted as a scroll when it is rolling itself up and every mountain and island were removed out of their place. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. See. Um, Revelation nineteen eighteen, and uh, this is the return of Christ. Revelation nineteen eighteen, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, is everything, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And uh, on Christ's return, this great army is coming to make war against Yeshua, and we'll be going over that one, that's for sure. Okay. Uh, back to Revelation 6, 16, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. Luke 23, 28, 30. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, Weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. 29. For behold, the days are coming in which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. So when Yeshua returns, are those finding out that they worshipped the false messiah, they're going to want to die. Christ is coming back for his virgin bride. And um, this is how he feels, you know, how God has feelings, you know. It's, you're worshipping something, somebody else, not, not me, you know. But many eyes will be opened, and the veil taken off, as the 7,000 very elect are brought up, and they testify. 
and they will turn away because they have been deceived and then they dis discover they were deceived and they're just so ashamed that they would fall for that. But there is a way for you to be able to uh, to avoid that completely. And you got to study. Okay. Now, Revelation 6.17. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Okay, so the next chapter, chapter 7, talks about the 144,000 sealed. And what you might want to do is do your own study on... Revelation 1 through 4, it goes over the churches, and uh, two of the churches were in good standing and were able to get through um, Satan's tribulation without worshiping, and they were the ones that were brought up to testify. The rest aren't going to fare so well. So you want to know, it's the seven churches are just analogies um, as to types. And so you'll definitely want to know. All right, um, so the next video will be on Revelation chapter 7 and the 144,000. Okay.